Hello, and let's look at solve and submit number 10, problem 1, and then we'll do problem 2 later. In problem 1, we're given the following information. Of the lakes we looked at, 42 have the zebra mussel, or 42, so there are 42 successes. The number of lakes I looked at was 78. That information is given. I have the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that it's equal to 50%. The alternative is greater. And we're also given alpha equals 0 0.05 at the top. Now we know this is a one sample proportions test. Again, the one sample will make sense on Tuesday. This is a proportions test because we're dealing with P, proportions. So the first thing we're supposed to do is to use the critical value method. Use the critical value method to test the hypothesis. That means we have to do two things. One, calculate the test statistic. Since this, is, since this is a proportions test, that test statistics is Z. Two, determine the critical value. And then three, compare. From our notes, we know Z is equal to, well, this is a proportion stuff, so this is going to equal P hat minus P over the square root of P, Q over N. Now we just plug and chug. P is equal to 0.5. P hat is whatever 42 over 78 is. given to us as one half, that's what we are hypothesizing. Q is, as always, one minus P. And this is a 42. Now from our calculator, this is equal to 2 is to find the critical value. Since this is a Z test statistic, we're going to go to the standard normal table, which is in the back of the book. Standard normal table requires that we know alpha. And at this point, we have to think, OK, do we use alpha, or do we use alpha divided by 2? Is this going to be a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test? The way we know is because the alternative is greater than this will be a one-tailed test, and the critical value is going to be a positive number. If this was less than, it would be a one-tailed test, and the critical value would be a negative number. And if this was not equal to, then the uh, critical value would correspond to a two-tailed test, and you'd have both a lower than and a, a negative and a positive. So critical value. Alpha is 0.05, so we go to our table, we look for the value of Z of alpha, 1.645. In our table, the body of the table will look for 0.05, because that 0.05 is a probability, and in the Z table, that probability is in the body of the table. We'll find that it's actually between two values, exactly between two values. Then the Z value will be whatever is over here, plus whatever is along the top. And since it's exactly between two values, it'll be the ratio, the average of these two. So to find the critical value, that's 1.645. That's step two. And step three is to compare. There's the critical value. There's what we observed. And just to draw a picture here, even though it's not necessary for you to do so, 
There's the normal distribution, mean of zero. Here's the critical value. That's the critical value because this area is 0 0.05, and this is 1.645. In the critical value method, if we observe a test statistic in the shaded area, then we reject the null hypothesis. Here's the test statistic, it's 0.679. That's way down here. This test statistic is not in the shaded area, therefore we cannot reject the null hypothesis. And that's solving problem 1A using, solving problem 1 using the critical value method. One B, this stuff actually remains. B is using the p value method. In the p value method, one, you calculate the test statistic. Two, you calculate from that the p-value. And three, you compare that to alpha. Well, we've already calculated the test statistic. It's 0 0.679. So now we calculate the p-value. It's going to be a handy little picture here. observe a 0 0.679. Our alternative is greater than, so we shade everything greater than, that's 0.679. This shaded area is our p-value. How do we actually calculate that? We can use the methods from chapter 4. Or we can use our calculator. I prefer to use the calculator. <coughs> and we would use one prop Z test. One because it's a one sample test. Prop because it's proportion. Z because our test statistic has a Z distribution and test because we're testing a hypothesis. And that's B. We find out that our, our p-value is 0.248. So this shaded area is 0.248. Since the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There is no evidence, there is no sufficient evidence, that the proportion of lakes with zebra mussels in Oklahoma is greater than 50%. You need a new eraser, I think. C, we're going to use the confidence interval method. Calculate the confidence interval. Well, we did that last time. That was chapter 7 stuff. So we used the chapter 7 work. And then determine if what we observed and here that observed value is the 42 over 78. If the observed value of this 42 over 78 is inside that confidence interval, then that means that this, that means that this is, I'm sorry, the 50%. If that 50% is in the confidence interval, then we conclude that 50% is a reasonable value for the proportion of legs with zebra muscles in Oklahoma. If 50% is not, 
then we conclude that 50% is not a reasonable value. Because remember, confidence interval is a set of reasonable values for the population parameter. So this is a one prop z int. This is what we did back in the previous chapter. And when we do the one prop z int, we get an interval from 0 0.43. to 0.65. For 95% confident that the true population proportion, since we're dealing with P's, is between 0.43 and 0.65. It's between 43 and 65%. Our null hypothesis of 50% is in there. Therefore, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. There is not sufficient evidence that the actual proportion is greater than 50%. And that's one. Problem two is similar, except instead of dealing with proportions, it deals with a mean. Let's write down the information we're given. In two, we're given x X bar is 25.8, S 6.1, N 35. Our null hypothesis is that the mean is 27. Our alternative is that the mean is greater than and that mean is greater than 27 is our claim, by the way. So one is to use a critical value method. Same three steps. Calculate test statistic. Here, that test statistic was about the mean. And we don't know sigma. So it's going to be a t-test statistic. Plug and chug. calculator, we get a negative 1.16. So there's our test statistic. Step two is determine the critical value. Test statistic is t, therefore the tr critical value is going to come from a t table. Alpha is 0 0.05, and it's a one-tailed test. And the critical value is going to be a positive number. So we go to the t table. We look for a one-tailed test across the top, 0.05. Then we go down until we get to our degrees of freedom. But are the degrees of freedom for one sample test? They're n minus 1. So we go down until the degrees of freedom are equal to 34. Go across, and we see that the number given is 1.69. If this had been mu is less than 27, the critical value would be a negative 1.69. But it's greater than 27, so it's a positive 1.69. And then part three is compare. Our test statistic is here. Our critical value is here. And from the rule, since the test statistic is not more extreme than the critical value, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. In short, T is not greater than CV. Greater than, so we care about the greater than part. If this was mu is less than 27, 
then remember the CV would have been a negative, and we would then ask, is T less than CV? To reflect, this would have been a less than. But it's not, it's a greater than. Because T is not greater than CV, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, conclude that there is no, not sufficient evidence that the average corrosion rate is, uh, is greater than 27. Part B is to use the p-value method. Step one is to calculate the test statistic. Step two is to calculate the p-value. And step three is to compare p-value to alpha. So I've got the test statistic already calculated. Go ahead and draw a picture. Observe a negative 1.16. So we draw our line up to the curve. Alternative hypothesis is greater than, so we shade everything greater than that line. And this shaded area is the p value. Using our calculator to calculate the p-value, we get a p of 0.87. Shaded area is 87% of the area under the normal curve, or under the t-curve. Since the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There is not sufficient evidence that the mean corrosion in Oklahoma Bridges is greater than 27. Since we are doing a test and we are using one sample t-test, we can use the t-test function on our TI calculators. It's in the usual place. And finally, the confidence interval method. Three steps. One, calculate the confidence interval. Two, compare our hypothesized mean to our confidence interval. If mu is inside the confidence interval, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. If it's outside, we reject. Methods for calculating the confidence interval, or technically the endpoints to the confidence interval, were from last chapter. Remember the function on the calculator, t interval. When you do that, we get a confidence interval of 23.71 to 27.90. Our hypothesized mean 27 is in the confidence interval. Therefore, it is a reasonable value for mu. Therefore, we do not reject the null hypothesis. If mu is in the confidence interval, do not reject the null hypothesis. So, in one, all three led to fail to reject the null hypothesis. In two, all three also led to fail to reject the null hypothesis. It is not always true that the three methods will give the same results. When your data are discrete, there are times when you will get different conclusions. It's very rare, though. When the data are continuous, such as the second case, you will always get the same results. So this is solvent submit number 10. Hopefully talking through it like this helps. So have a great weekend. I'll talk to you later. Bye.